Wakey, wakey, sweetheart. It's time for your medicine. And I need to change your wound dressings. Yeah, let me help you up, sweetheart. There you go. <laughs> I know it's still difficult for you to move. But you look so cute when you're so helpless like this. <laughs> here's your pills. And here's some water. Drink up. Good boy. Yeah, let me see your tongue. Just to make sure you don't choke or anything like that. Just to make sure you're safe. <laughs> Good, baby. Good. No time to check your bandages. Hmm. Looks like your leg is healing up nicely. It's a good thing I was able to help you, isn't it? <laughs> oh, you're not still mad at me, are you, baby? You know what I did was necessary for you. It was necessary for us in the development of our relationship. You needed to learn the importance of commitment and trust. The importance of devotion and what's at stake if you choose not to remember that. Then you. <laughs> so that's what I gave you. And now you're fully devoted to me. Fully devoted to us. Aren't you, my love? <laughs> I knew it. All those trials and tribulations that we've been through together. So many ups and downs. They were necessary. And I knew they'd help you get to where you could truly See how special what we have together is. How important it is to keep it special. Unique. Just between us. But you know, baby, I didn't want it to be like that. I didn't want to have to do those things. I didn't want you to be in pain, to hurt you. But you left me no choice. Did you? And you hurt me. You hurt us because of it. Please don't make me do it again, sweetheart. Please don't let it come to that. Not again. I can't imagine what the consequences of your lack of affection, of passion for us as soulmates would look like. But we'll never have to find out. Will we, baby? <laughs> oh, I love you more than anything, sweetheart. And because of that, your pain is my pain. Your pleasure is my pleasure. And your life is my life. Don't ever forget that. Okay? <laughs> Good. I knew you'd understand, baby. I knew you'd get it. Because what we have together is true love. Not like what you see in fairy tales. That kind of stuff is total bullshit. What we have is a strong understanding of one another. And we're okay letting each other be who we are. So long as who we are is together. Right, baby? We were made for each other. We were made to exist as one. Forever and always. 
for all of eternity. And nothing and nobody will ever get in the way of that, will they? <laughs> That's right, baby. No, they won't. Oh, look at how cute you look when you're so dependent on me. <laughs> oh, I'll always take care of you, my love. And I'll always be by your side. You can count on me. I'll never let you go. <laughs> oh, baby. Please don't cry. Come here. Let me hold you in my arms. Mm, there, there. Shh, shh, shh. You okay, my love? I'm right here with you. I'll always be here for you. To protect you. To make you happy. To make you feel seen. To make you feel whole. Everything is okay now. Isn't it? We understand each other now, don't we? Mm, your hair smells so good. It's so soft, sweetheart. Mm. Do you enjoy having me stroke your hair? <laughs> good. Listen to me, baby. It's going to be okay. I promise. We recognize what one another needs now. What is necessary for each other. We see eye to eye, don't we? <laughs> because everything is so much clearer now. So simple. It's you and I, baby. That's all that really matters, isn't it? You and I, inseparable. <laughs> Good boy. I'm so glad that you can finally accept it. That you can finally realize that it's me you need. Only me. <sighs> I'm so glad you understand us now. And nobody is ever going to hurt you. I wouldn't even let you hurt you. <laughs> That's why I'm so good at taking care of you. You see that now, right baby? That without me, there's only pain. Suffering. Anguish. <laughs> That's my good boy. God, you're so cute right now, baby. So fucking cute. Oh, I need to taste your lips. Let me see them. finish up dressing your wounds. I don't want you to get infected or something. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, set up, baby. There you go. Hmm. Yes. Well, you did break your leg and you bled out a lot. I fucking hate when you get hurt, when you hurt yourself. But not to worry, my love. <laughs> Your devoted nurse, Nisha, is here on duty 24-7 to see to all your wants and needs. <laughs> to take care of you in any way that you require, in any way that you need, in any way that you crave. <laughs> Hmm? 
What do you mean you didn't know my name was Nisha? <laughs> That's right, of course you know it. The pills you took are just making you drowsy. Right. Right. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> just stay laying back now. Recovering. Resting. And relax. Let me do all the work. Let me do the heavy lifting now, sweetheart. You trust me, right? You trust me with your life now, don't you, my love? Good. Good boy. <laughs> I'll take care of you, baby. Boost you back to good health. Aid you in your recuperation. Your readjustment. I'll never let you go. I'll never let anybody else have you but me. Not even the Reaper himself has a chance against me. <laughs> Not when I have him underneath me. <laughs> what do they say? Between a rock and a hard place. <laughs> oh, you're smiling, baby. I love your smile. It lights me up even on my darkest days. Even when times are hard. I swear, your beaming face alone could bring me to my knees. And has. <laughs> okay, all patched up. You want me to play with your hair again? <laughs> of course, baby. Come here. Come lay in my arms. Where you're safe. <laughs> Would you like me to read you a story too? <laughs> okay. Because you've been such a good boy. And stayed in bed like I've asked. And because you've listened to everything I've said since... The escape room. Don't worry, baby. I won't bring it up again. You've learned your lesson since then. Right? Right. <laughs> no need to talk about it anymore. Okay. A story. Hmm. Let's see. Hmm. Oh, I know the perfect one. Just relax, okay, baby? Listen to my voice while I read to you, okay? You're going to love it. <laughs> and you'll see that everything is alright in the world again. Okay. Once upon a time, there were four little rabbits, and their names were Flopsy, Mopsy, Cottontail, and Peter. They lived with their mother in a sandbank underneath the root of a very big fir tree. Now, my dears, said old Mrs. Rabbit one morning, you may go into the fields or down the lane, but don't go into Mr. McGregor's garden. Your father had an accident there. <laughs> he was put in a pie by Mrs. McGregor. Now, run along and don't get into mischief. I'm going out. Then, old Mrs. Rabbit took a basket and her umbrella to the baker's. She bought a loaf of brown bread and five currant buns. Flopsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail, who were good little bunnies, went down the lane to gather blackberries. But Peter, who was very, very naughty, ran straight away to Mr. McGregor's garden and squeezed under the gate. First he ate some lettuces, 
and some French beans. And then he ate some radishes. And then, feeling rather sick, of course he was sick, he went to look for some parsley. But round the end of the cucumber frame, whom should he meet but Mr. McGregor? Mr. McGregor was on his hands and knees, planting out young cabbages. But he jumped up and ran after Peter, waving a rake and calling out, Stop, thief! Peter was most dreadfully frightened, and he should be. He rushed all over the garden, for he had forgotten the way back to the gate. He lost one of his shoes among the cabbages and the other shoe amongst the potatoes. After losing them, he ran on all four legs and went faster so that I think he might have gotten away altogether if he had not unfortunately run into a gooseberry net and got caught by the large buttons on his jacket. It was a blue jacket with brass buttons, quite new. Peter gave himself up for lost and shed big tears, but his sobs were overheard by some friendly sparrows who flew to him in great excitement and implored him to exert himself. Mr. McGregor came up with a sieve, which he intended to pop upon the top of Peter. But Peter wriggled out just in time, leaving his jacket behind him, and rushed into the tool shed and jumped into a can. It would have been a beautiful thing to hide in if it had not had so much water in it. Mr. McGregor was quite sure that Peter was somewhere in the tool shed, <laughs> perhaps hidden underneath a flower pot. He began to turn them over carefully, looking under each one. Presently, Peter sneezed. Achoo! Achoo! Mr. McGregor was after him in no time and tried to put his foot upon Peter, who jumped out of the window, upsetting three plants. The window was too small for Mr. McGregor, and he was tired of running after Peter. He went back to his work. Mr. McGregor may have been tired, but I wouldn't be. <laughs> Peter sat down to rest. He was out of breath and trembling with fright. And he had not the least idea which way to go. Also, he was very damp from sitting in that can. After a time, he began to wander about, going lippity, lippity, not very fast, and looking all around. He found a door in a wall, but it was locked, <laughs> and there was no room for a fat little rabbit to squeeze underneath. An old mouse was running in and out over the stone doorstep, carrying peas and beans to her family in the wood. Peter asked her the way to the gate, but she had such a large pea in her mouth that she could not answer. <laughs> She only shook her head at him. Peter began to cry. Mm, poor little rabbit. Then he tried to find his way straight across the garden, but he became more and more puzzled. Presently, he came to a pond where Mr. McGregor filled his water cans. A white cat was staring at some goldfish. She sat very, very still, but now and then the tip of her tail twitched as if it were alive. Peter thought it best to go away without speaking to her. He had heard about cats from his cousin, little Benjamin Bunny. He went back towards the tool shed, but suddenly, quite close to him, he heard the noise of a hoe. Scritch, 
scritch, scratch, scratch, scritch. Peter scuttered underneath the bushes. <laughs> but presently, as nothing happened, he came out and climbed upon a wheelbarrow and peeped over. The first thing he saw was Mr. McGregor hoeing onions. His back was turned towards Peter, and beyond him was the gate. Peter got down very quietly off the wheelbarrow and started running as fast as he could go along a straight walk behind some black currant bushes. Mr. McGregor caught sight of him at the corner, but Peter did not care. He slipped underneath the gate and thought he was safe at last in the wood outside the garden. But Mr. McGregor appeared out of nowhere and bashed him over the head with his hoe, killing him instantly, his blood spattering all over the ground and his brains. And then Peter was gone. <laughs> Isn't that such a lovely story, baby? <laughs> Not all stories need happy endings, my love. Especially when naughty little rabbits are involved. <laughs> but you did like it, didn't you, baby? <laughs> I knew you would, my love. That was The Tale of Peter Rabbit by Beatrix Potter. And do you understand the moral of the story, baby? <laughs> That's right. It doesn't end well for anyone to be disobedient when those you love are just trying to protect you, to keep you safe, to keep you out of harm's way. Peter Rabbit was a naughty boy. A naughty widow bunny. But he learned from it in the end, didn't he? With his life. Just like you have learned your lesson as well. Right, baby? <laughs> you trust me to do what is necessary to keep you safe. To protect you. Because I love you. Because you are special to me. I know your needs, your desires, and I'm going to be the one to continue to give them to you, to make you happy, <laughs> to make you feel satisfied, whole, complete. <laughs> That's right, sweetheart. You're mine, and I'm yours. Now. What's the best thing after a lesson? <laughs> Dessert, silly. You deserve something special. And I'm going to give it to you. 